Hey, good morning, everybody. What's happening? This is Pastor Darren. I'm coming to you from Crossroads Church. We're right here online, Cobb County, Georgia. We want to thank you for attending our service this morning. Listen, it is brisky, cool outside here in Atlanta, but we're grateful to God that you that you got out of the bed and you're attending this service with us. Hope you got your pen and your paper and you're ready to go and you're ready to praise the Lord with us. All right. So listen, we're in this series called Love Letters, but this is the last one. The very last one. So, you know, I say the, the the best for last. And so I hope you got to again, get your pen, get your paper, get your, all your things you need to do. Get it done because we're about to hear the word of God. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for this time, this moment you've given us. Thank you for this series of love letters and how our lives is to reflect your goodness and how our lives is to testify about, about who you are to us. We thank you for it. We give you praise and honor and worship in Jesus name. Amen. So again, Crossroads Church, hey, listen, don't take a moment, share this video. We want to get our we want to get our subscriptions up, up, up. We want to touch people with the gospel. And surely, surely, I know if you're being blessed by this, some of your friends, your family members, your relatives, your, your classmates, they'll be blessed as well. All right. So share this video. And again, thank you for, for being on with us. I was in the store last week, and there was this young lady in there. Uh, she, she had a relatively new newborn baby. And the baby just out of the blue started crying. I mean, crying. I mean, you know, one of those cry, those cries where they, they cry and then they can't breathe and start doing that. <laughs> and this baby was crying. I mean, this, that sound said, I'm, I'm cute, but I need you to pay attention. <laughs> it's one of them times, you know, to get everybody's attention in the store. So we stand over in the meat, the meat section and, and listen, when I tell you that baby, that, that scream uh, basically told his mama and daddy, hey, listen, I, I tried to get y'all attention earlier, but y'all weren't listening, so I'm going to give y'all the emergency level. I mean, he let out a scream. I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> and then, you know, all the moms in the store, you know, you know, all the moms were looking around like, oh, where the baby, you know, because it's in them to try to solve and see what, what was happening. But so, so, so the young fellow, you know, he was screaming, but of course, you know, he, he just was hungry. Right, he was hungry, but Mama was feeling around, filling his diaper, trying to make sure she could do what she got to do to stop the boy from crying. And but once she she realized it, you know, he's just hungry again. And she was like, "I just fed him. I just fed him." So she had to, you know, she had to do what she had to do in the store. So she 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 she, she breastfed him in the store, and and it was it was it was funny because everybody was laughing because he lit the store up. He lit it up. I mean, <laughs> so as I'm standing in line. I just start to think about the mind of God. I said, you know, man, God knows all about us. He knows all about our needs. Matter of fact, he created our needs, right? And if he created our needs, that means he knows all about us. Yes. So matter of fact, listen, matter of fact, God created and he put systems in place to meet our needs. Yeah. That, that's why we call him provider, because he puts he built systems that will provide for us uh, uh, the things that we need uh, in this earth realm. So he did it for all of creation, all of creation, everything that has life. God has created a system to provide for it. Right. So he knew babies would be hungry and, 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 and need food in the herd. That little boy said, I get it. I need it. I need it now. So he know he knew that would happen. So he put food right there in mama's chest. All she had to do was like put her cover on and put it and give it to the little boy. And it was good. And listen, he, he, he stopped crying automatically. Right. I remember when my wife got pregnant with, with the, all three of our kids. She got pregnant. Uh, she, she would say, say to me, she said, you know, I can feel my milk coming in. And, and, I, and I was like, oh, well, you know, <laughs> I ain't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't need no pill. She didn't need prayer. She didn't nobody hoping. She didn't need any of that. It just all took place. Why? Because God created systems to meet our needs. Why? Because God is a provider for us, right? In this dispensation we live in, if we allow him to, right? So if we are, and we are uh, beings with needs, matter of fact, what, what, what does that mean? That means that we are often quick to search for things that will help solve our bodies or soul issues. Matter of fact, that's why I was in the grocery store that day because I needed to meet a, a need. We need to eat. So I went to the grocery store and they provide things for me to meet needs, right? Listen, so, so God is amazing. So he, he, he created us that we would need things and then he created systems to meet those needs. That's why we need things like food and shelter and protections and we need clothes and we need jobs and money, rest, enjoyment, relationships, 
All these things we need because God created us to need them. But he gave, he gave us systems to meet those needs. So every need we have, God has a systematic approach that he's already put, listen, this is important, that he's already put in the earth realm to meet our need. <laughs> That's why we call him provider. Why? Let me say it again. Because he's created a system that is designed to meet every need we have. Yeah. The Bible says it's about God. The scripture says that he created the earth, right? He created the earth. Everything in it belongs to him. That means he created it and he sustains it, right? In other words, he keeps it from lacking anything. The earth don't lack anything. If it's, if it's messed up, we messed it up or sin messed it up. But God created it to operate on his own. Oh, my God. All right, let me show you. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Y'all ready? Let's get into this. It's going to be good. Oh, you got to get your pen and paper because this is going to be really good. Psalms 11, Psalms 121, 1 through 6. Listen to what it says. It says, I look up to the, the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he watches over Israel. I'm sorry. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. You see that? So he created all these systems to benefit us, as this scripture is saying, and none of those systems will harm us. <laughs> Come on, man. Because, again, the purpose of our needs is that we might look to God and his systems for help. That's why, again, why I went to the grocery store, why I was there. Why? Because I was looking to God's system of supply of food for help. He provided all of that. Come on, somebody. Can a brother get an amen in the comments? Yeah, listen, think about it. When God created the earth, when he created the earth, everything that he created from that point on came as a result of the earth. He didn't go outside of the system of the earth to create us. He created man, man and woman, right? He created man from the dirt. He created woman from man. So every system that he created, that he created, uh, uh, I'm sorry, when he created earth, he created systems to provide for man to live here. Yes. So, so now listen, there will never be a shortage of people. <laughs> Did you ever thought about that? Why? Because sex is designed to produce people and we will always have people on this earth. There will never be a shortage because God's system of providing people will always work. Oh, I'm preaching good already. I feel, I feel, I feel God in this place. All right. So listen, so, so again, he created these systems to point back to him. They all point back to him, right? So because he's continually meeting our needs. That's why you have a job. Your job supports your needs. It should. We'll talk about that later. All right. <laughs> Come on, man. Because the whole earth is about people, life, existence, and the one who created it, who says, I'll keep it, I'll sustain it, right? I'll build systems that they can use and depend on that'll point back to me. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, he's my provider. So, so, so you might say, Pastor Dan, okay, that sounds good, but what's your proof? What is your proof God is a provider for us? Oh, yeah. First of all, the, the scripture is a proof. The scripture tells us that God is a provider of all needs. Right? He is the one that orchestrated and organized and created systems here for us and for not just us, but for every living creature. The animals, they live, for, they live off of God. All right, let me, let me give you an example. Let me show you. Let's first, let's read the scripture. This is uh, Matthew 6, 26 to 30. This is Jesus teaching. He's teaching his disciples not to worry. Hope you're getting some out of this. You got, you got to listen now. Listen, he says, look at the birds. You, you, you hear that? He, he tells his disciples, what are y'all looking at? No, you need to look at the birds, nature, look at it. They don't plant or harvest or store foods in barns for your heavenly father feeds them. You see that? So now the, so that's a system now, the system of planting and harvesting and then storing it. So the, for us, that's working, that's getting the job, going to work, putting some money in the bank. <laughs> he says the animals don't do any of that, but the father feeds them. Are you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why, and why worry about clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Y'all see that? Yet Solomon in all his glory is not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wild flowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you 
So why do you have so little faith? You see that? So listen, so what's our proof? Our first, our first proof that we can see that Jesus tells us to look at was nature because nature don't work. He says, listen, the animals don't work. They don't sow or reap. They're not, listen, they're not connected to a system. They're not. He, Jesus said, God feeds them. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, man. That's what, Jesus, that's, that, that's what the scripture says. He says, he, so, so what we must do is we must observe and not just be here, exist. No, look around and see. I love this. See, this, I, I'm a teacher, right? God made me a teacher. He did. And so what teachers are, just like what Jesus did, he, he told the disciples, he said, stop. Hey, stop. Look. Look around. Look. Observe. Take a moment and really observe what's happening. Right? So that's what I'm telling you, us, Crossroads. Hey, let's just stop. And let's just look. God's our provider. Let's stop. Let's see how can we see the systems that he has in place to provide for us. Because he's provided systems for us. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yes. Okay. Most of the time, the problem is we're not participating in the system. Oh yeah, all right, come on, what else? So, so na nature doesn't work, right? So so what does that mean? That means, for instance, have you ever thought about this? How does the animals know where to go to get food? I think about it all the time. Where, how does, the, I go fishing, I love fish. I went fishing yesterday, I had a great time. All right, so listen, how, does the, how do they know where to go to get fish? I mean, to get food. God put it in them, because they don't work. So he had instinctively put in them to go look for the things that he created for them to be fed. I'll, you mean say that again? He put it in them to instinctively look for things that he has created to feed them. It's in them. A, a, a perfect example, I was at the house the other day. I looked up, I hear this, this loud noise in the sky. Here comes some ducks. Why, 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 why are they coming down? I said, oh, man, they're coming south for the winter. Why are they coming south for the winter? Well, I know it's cold up north, but they could, they could bear a lot of it. But you know why? Food. Their food source die up winter. Them bugs and stuff, they, it gets too cold. They, they die or go underground. The birds come south, why? Because we don't experience that cold weather. God put that in them, right? Nobody tells the ducks to go. No, God put it in them, right? So, so, so they follow God's system of supply. That's what they do. They follow God's system of supplies. And, and see, listen, the people in the scriptures, they were farmers, so they got this. So when Jesus is teaching this, they got it because they were farmers. They, they understood. We're not, so we have to explain this to us, right? So that's why in the Bible, I think it's, the lot, uh, uh, Second Thessalonians 3, I think, where, where, where Paul says, hey, if a person don't work, they don't eat. What's he saying? If they don't subscribe to God's system of supply, don't let them participate in it. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, he got to participate in the system in order to benefit from it. That's what he's saying. <sighs> yeah, so so again, God, God is our, God, what's our proof? His nature doesn't work. They just follow God's supply and then they never suffer lack. See, listen, I said this before. If we just leave them alone, if we leave the animals alone, they'll, they'll work the thing out because they know God put it in them what to do. Let me show you the smallest bug. This is the smallest, one of the, small, one of the smallest bugs on the planet. It's called a fair fly, I think is what it is. See, what do they eat? I thought about this. Do they have a stomach? I mean, they have all the things that God created them to have, but I just think it's fascinating that this tiny little bug knows exactly where to eat what to do, how to survive, that it might continue to live on earth. Because it couldn't live without the existence, or it can't live without the systems God put in place in order for it to survive. It, listen, in order for it to survive, it needs systems. The same for me and you. In order for us to survive, we, need, we, we survive of God's systems of supply. Are y'all here? Can a brother get an amen in the, in the comment? I mean, I don't know why. They got the heat on this thing. It's hot in here. <laughs> so listen. So what, what's, your, what's your proof that God is our provider? Here, number two, listen. We are more valuable than the animals. Sorry, animal lovers. I don't mean to hurt your feelings. I ain't coming for your dog or your cat. I, I, I'm not. <laughs> but I just want you to know that the Bible says that God said that we're more valuable than the animals. So God created systems specifically for humans. Right. But when it comes to us, he's not just limited to that system. He can supersede it. That's why we, the miracles were so great in the Bible. When Jesus fed all those people, he gave took seven loaves and fed all those people. Why? He superseded the systems of supply. <laughs> Are y'all here? Yeah. So 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 uh, since God owns everything, since he owns everything, what he does is he just looks for opportunities to prove to us that we're more valuable. 
than everything else. I'll say that again. Since he is the provider, he looks for things or ways and opportunities to provide for us, to prove to us, you're more valuable than the birds. You're more valuable than the plants to me. So, I'm a, so your supply will be a whole lot better, a whole lot more vast. <laughs> Come on. That's why Jesus told his disciples, right? He told them, he said, he said uh, again, Matthew 26, 30, we just read it. He said, so don't worry because worry is failure to acknowledge what? The obvious, the obvious systems that are working for just the animals. Y'all here still with me? So, so uh, he, he, he's saying, listen, you're more valuable than that. So why are you worrying? He told his disciples many times, he said, listen, Blessed are those that have eyes that can see and ears that can hear. And oftentimes, we'll, we'll, we'll stay in worry, develop all kind of uh, 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 bodily issues because, we're, because we worry. And, and, and the reason is, is because we don't look to see the systems that he has in place. No, the obvious is, how is he animals, why are animals living? <laughs> Come on, man. How are the birds living? How does fish, how they live? God created systems for them to live on. Yeah. So he feeds them through nature. <laughs> Just like he feeds us through nature. He feeds us. I mean, come on, you plant, you plant. I remember when I was a kid, I used to, I used to do a garden almost, not almost every summer, but several summers during my life, I would have a, a garden every summer. I just loved it. I still do today. I love it. Put, take a seed, put it in the ground, water it, watch it comes up, watch all the stuff bloom. I was just fascinated by it, right? But every, it, listen, I'd grow me some corn and some okra and, and what else? I had some beans. I didn't do tomatoes for them too much work. But uh, 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 things that were really kind of easy, I did peas and uh, I would put them in a, put them in a little, little garden behind the house and, and just... Work it up, you know, and just my mom loved it and all that stuff. So, so uh, it taught me some valuable lessons that God has created systems that works for us. And that's why worry, worry is a failure to acknowledge the obvious, right? And worry is when we don't recognize God's system is working. We don't, we don't, we don't acknowledge it. That's all God wants. He wants acknowledgement. Hey, this thing working. Oh yeah. See, that's why we say grace. Grace is us acknowledging God that, hey, your system of supply a food for us worked. Why? Because we got food today. Come on, somebody. Can a brother get an amen? You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Listen, worry is, worry is when we don't recognize that his system is work. His work is working. Go, I, can't say, I told you a couple weeks ago, go in your closet and look. It, it's working. The problem is what the enemy does is that he has to blow things up. He has to make, he has to over-exaggerate things. He has to continue to lie to us to try to uh, discredit God so that we will never acknowledge the systems that he's put in place that we attach ourselves to that provide the, uh, uh, the things that we, we need. Y'all with me today? Come on, man. I'm preaching good. I feel good. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach myself happy in a minute. All right. Cool. So let's talk about it. All right. Let's talk. We'll get, that was our introduction. Now let's talk about it. Let's talk about When we say provider, what do we mean? Because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about God is our provider. What do you mean, Pastor Dan, when you say provider? Listen, provider means God is the one who systematically oversees the meeting of my needs. <laughs> oh my God. I love that. That's my definition. If you see it somewhere else, you know Pastor Darren did it. All right. I'm the one to create. Listen. God is the one who systematically oversees the meeting of our needs, right? What does that mean? I mean, he has attached systems that work all the time. He attached it to your needs. Come on, somebody. Oh, yes. Food. Think about it. If there was a real food shortage in our world, most of the folks would be dead by now. There's, there's, there's shortages because man has tapped in and messed up the system. That's why we can't have things about greed. And, and that's why God challenges us to keep certain things out of our own personal lives. Why? Because they interrupt the system. And when the systems are interrupted, he doesn't get any acknowledgement. Or we never turn to him. Come on, man. All right? So, again, God is faithful. He's faithful to us. Which means, listen, he is committed to making sure his creation is sustained and kept alive. He's faithful to us. He is our provider if we let him. Right? And so he's always ahead of us. Because he put systems in place that I mean, I need. When Adam got there, the systems was already there. God, God, he said he created heavens and earth, but the but the, the the ground was there, the plants were there, all that God created it all. It was all in place for Adam to live. Just like your job. See, your job or your business, your company, whatever you do for work, it, it's the same. 
It's designed to systematically meet your needs. That's why you get paid every two weeks. System. It all comes from God. We don't give it, we don't acknowledge him, but that's where it came from. Every two weeks, you get paid. Why? Systematically. So you can, you can, you can um, plan your life out accordingly. That's God. That's from him. I mean, that's why we have, listen, that's why we have seasons. Have, do, 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 have you noticed that there's certain vegetables and fruit that grow during certain seasons? That's God. We pattern our lives after him, but we don't acknowledge him. Come on, somebody. That's why healthcare, I, my wife is a nurse. And my degree is in healthcare administration, but the healthcare system is designed for one thing. What? Meet the needs of sick people and well people. Keep us healthy. That's, the, that's what the healthcare system is designed, designed for. <sighs> Come on, man. All of it comes from God. He is our provider because he systematically oversees things that meet our needs. All right? So if we're going to write our letter to God today, everybody, hope you got your pen and your paper out and you're ready to write. We will say, hey, dear God, how do we allow our lives to reflect that you're our provider? <laughs> I love it, man. Come on, somebody. This is good preaching. Okay, I can't get, can I, give me something in the comments. You ain't got to give me amen, but give me something. Y'all give me something. Tell me, give me a high five. Do me, give me something, right? How do we, how do we allow our lives to reflect that God is our provider? Right? Because just like the animals now, he connects us to a system that gives us what we need. Right? Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. This is, this is Genesis, the second chapter, 15 verse. Listen to this. It says, the Lord, this is when God created Adam. And he, he says, the Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord the God warned him, you may freely eat of the fruit of every tree in the garden, except of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat this fruit, you will surely die. You see that? So, so, so God, the first thing God did for Adam was he gave him work. Before he even warned him about anything, before the warning, he gave him an assignment to work. In other words, God, the Holy Spirit, he leads us to a system called work, right? So he attaches our life to a system called work that will supply our needs. <sighs> Come on, somebody, yeah, right? He attached you to that system called work that will help supply the things that you need. Man, that's, that's why we have skills and abilities and desires to do things in the earth realm. That's why some of us are doctors and lawyers and, and, and coaches and teachers and all of these things. See, all those desires come inside of us. All of us is a part of God's big design. But listen, it's there to, to help meet your needs. Yes, that's why we say teachers need, they need more. Why? Because what we pay them won't meet their needs. <laughs> that system that we have in place won't meet their needs. So we need to work on the system. And that's what, listen, I ain't got time to get into it. I remember I do it another time. But that's why we, we're fighting today. We're fighting over systems that we're saying are working or not working, that are providing or not providing, that are doing good for the people or not good for the people. Come on, somebody. But this is what I know. God, the Holy Spirit, leads us to a system. It's called work. That's what he did for Adam. He said, Adam, hey, listen, I'm going to create this. You're in charge of it. So Adam was created to oversee God's system. Yeah. And see, in the beginning, work for Adam was good. It was delightful. All he had to do was go pick, pick the uh, pick the apple off the tree, uh, pick the tomato off the plant. That's all he had to do. And him and Eve, him and his wife, all they had to do was eat. That's it. It was good. He he had to just chill. I mean, he had he was enjoying it. He was made for it. He was made for that work. Made for that system to oversee, right? And that by him overseeing that system, that system fed him. Come on, somebody. Y'all here with me? See, I'm here preaching. I can't wait till we get back in person because I can get some, some, some A-bands, uh, you know, in real life, real lifetime. <laughs> but Adam, so for work for Adam, was it was not a strain. It was delightful. Come on, man. The ground or the earth was, was still under the blessing. So it produced right away. It was no strain, it was no drought, none of that. It was, right? But when Adam sinned, sin cursed the system that, got, that Adam depended upon. It cursed Come on, let me show you. Let me show you what happened. And see, we're under that system now. We're under this system where we got well, the, the results of that system that, uh, of Adam's rebellion. Listen, uh, this, is, this is Genesis 3, 18. It says, uh, or, or 17, it says, And the man said, since you have listened to, this is God's, uh, uh, I'm sorry. And, and to the man, he says, this is God talking. Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree, whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed, because of you. You see that? So God says, your system is cursed, Adam. 
Now all of a sudden the ground curse why? That was his system of supply. Working the ground was part of Adam's system. He says it's cursed. Listen, listen to what he says. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. You see that? So he went from delightful to scratching a living. <laughs> I mean, listen, verse 18. It, it will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat up its grains, but the sweat of your brow, but by the sweat of your brow, you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. You see that? So God told him to, hey man, from now your work will be strenuous. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to go to work and you're gonna be like, ah. Because working with thorns and thistles and a plant and, you know, I don't know if you ever had a rose or if you even got any berries, like, like blackberries, you go to pick those things, you'll get stuck. Well, that wasn't before, Adam, but that, that was a result of the fall. Before, none of that was there. Adam just couldn't go get it. With a bit. He just loved it. Now, all of a sudden, he got to till the ground. Stuff just came up out of the ground in the, in the Garden of Eden, not anymore. Adam had to till the ground and plant the seed. He had to do the work that God had already put in place to be done for him. Right? Come on, man. I remember, listen, I used to work in the field. I used to crop tobacco. I baled hay. That's, that's when you cut the grass and you put hay in a, in a, um, a bundle. You know, I forgot, a bale. They call it a bale. And then you throw, you stack them up and you get it all ready for the wintertime because you got to feed the cows and the, and, the, and the horses and all that because when it's cold, that stuff don't produce as well. It's not as nutritious, but during the summertime, it's very nutritious and we get it all up, right? That's some hard work. I mean, listen, I remember getting like, whoo, we working in them fields and we'd be like this. Whoo, man, whoo, that sun beating us down, sweating, turning three shades darker. I <laughs> mean, we were, listen, we, were, we had to work it. That's, what, that's how Adam was. And that's what sin did. Sin caused the systems that God put in place for us to be um, stressful, pull it for attention. You ever, you ever been on a job and you, you like this? Man, I just hate this place. Whew. God didn't create it like that. He didn't. What he created for Adam was delightful. All right? It was all those things. And again, again, I'm trying to help you understand how your life reflected God as a provider. But the Holy Spirit will lead you to a system called work. And what you have to do is press through those moments where you, whew, whew, man, this is foolishness. And God told Adam, by the, spread of your, by the sweat of your brow, Adam, from now on, Adam, when you sweat, you're going to live by your sweat. <laughs> he was not designed to do that. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Right? So what does God do? He attaches us to work. The Spirit of God leads us to places so that we can work. Just like Adam was. It's to work. It's to benefit. See, listen. It's to benefit from a system. So if you work in the hospital, you're be, you, you, you are assigned to work at a system that meets somebody's needs. You see that? You farmers... A sign, some of my, 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 my farmer friends, they, we watched our, 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 our service down south in, in Georgia. Hey, what's up, y'all? But, but listen, you're, you're assigned to produce crops. Your life is, is designed to produce crops so that we can have food. That's a blessing. Right? Come on, man. Let's go. Number, number two. Number two. Again, we're, we're talking about how do we allow our lives to reflect that God is our provider. Number two, listen. He gives us a life that will benefit from your, your work system. Right. So just like he assigns you, give you all the skills and abilities to, 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 to get a job or own your own company to work. He does that. And that system is designed to benefit your, 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 um, your, your life. It's designed to benefit your life. That's why you want God to be your guide, because he knows the system that really benefit you. <laughs> you know, let me put it. Let me put it in plain English. Some of us got college degrees. We don't even work in those degrees. <laughs> I had a degree in healthcare administration. Well, it was good for a reason. It was good for a season. But at some point, God said, okay, let me change because that system is not going to benefit your life. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah. So he, he assigns and he guides us to systems that will benefit our lives. That's why things like slavery and debt and all those things, they're a curse. Why? Because that means somebody else is in charge of the system that is designed to bless my life. No. Oh, that's why slavery, slavery, especially here in America, it was um, it was a curse because why? The slaves didn't benefit from that. They didn't benefit from that. Our lives were worse because of that. No. See, this, when God assigns you to a, a system that's going to bless your life, it's designed to make your life good while you're here on earth, man. Yeah. See, in the biblical days, when they when they had they had slavery, but it was it was really um, I forgot the, the name of it. 
but it was um oh my goodness it, it, it was designed for you to pay off a debt but it couldn't go beyond after six years it was over god said hey the year of jubilee seven years nobody nobody owes anybody end all debt why because he didn't want in, listen he didn't want anybody to be over the system that was designed to bless your life he didn't so he said wipe it out because he wanted, he wanted to make sure that we acknowledge him as the one that gives these systems that bless our lives. Are y'all here with me today? That's why when the, when in, in the, uh, it was indentured, indentured, that's what, indentured slavery in the Bible, because uh, it only lasts for so long. And then when it left, he made them give them gold and silver and even some land and stuff they left with. Why? Because he, he wanted to make sure that the people's life benefited from being attached to that system. And see, in America, we got nothing. That's why it was such a curse, because they ruled our lives and we didn't benefit from it. Come on, man. That's why you don't want people in charge of your life. No, we call it debts. You don't want them in charge of that system God has placed over your life. You don't want them in charge. You want God to be in charge of it, not them. They want it, man. They be, that's why they get up, try to get us in debt, credit card debt, car debt. I remember one time I went to go buy a car and I had cash. They were doing everything in their power to get me to just, just, just sign up and and then you can pay it off and make good on your credit. I said, I ain't doing all that. My credit is already good. That's why I got cash. Here, <laughs> take this cash. And that's it, right? Because we want we, we want to make sure that no one is in charge of the system that God has designed to bless my life. No, listen, here's why. Because we're no longer under the curse. That means that we put God back in charge of the system of, 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 of our needs being made, being met. Right? So we're no longer under the curse. That means we, we, we now partner with God. At least I did. I hope you did too as Christians. We partner with God and we reappoint him as our provider. Not ourselves, not the system he has uh, attached to, but he is the ultimate one in charge of the system that he's assigned us to. Come on, man. Yes. Yeah. So 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 again, we, we partner with God, man. And that's why when when we have, I'm out there, like I told you, I used to crop, to crop tobacco and it was tedious, hot, <sighs> tiring, all those things. I remember going home and sweating and my mama's hugging me and all that stuff because it was so hot out there. And she, she'd tell us on so many days, baby, I pray for y'all. I'm praying for you out there in that heat. It's too, it's too hot. <laughs> but at that moment, listen, my, but listen, my life benefited from that, those times out in those fields. It did. God allowed it. But you know what I'm saying? So, so my, but my life as a young man, it benefited from that. Y'all still here? Right. Let me let me show you something. Let me give you this, this, this Exodus, the third chapter, 16 through 17 verse. It says, now go and call together all the elders of Israel. Tell tell them Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob has appeared to me. He told me I have been watching closely. I see the Egyptians, uh, uh, how the Egyptians are treating you. I have promised to rescue you from your oppression in Egypt. I will lead you to a land. Listen, flowing with milk and honey, the land with the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites. Paris, Paris, uh, Perisites, Hevites, <laughs> Jebusites, that where they live, right? He said, I'm going to get, listen, God said, I'm in I'm so in charge of the system that's assigned to bless your life. I'm in charge of it. I'm going to take all those people out. I'm going to put you in there. <laughs> Come on, somebody. That's why you want God to be the provider over the system that's designed to bless you. You want God in charge of it. Come on now. Put my job in charge. No, no, no. My job is not in charge of my, my financial system of my house. No, God is in charge of it. Now, I'm assigned to work it, but ultimately, I put him as, God, you're in charge of this. So if you want to move me, you want to do something, you can. Why? Because you're in charge of it, not it. <laughs> he said to the Egyptians, he said, listen, he, I mean, he told Moses, you tell them, I see the Egyptians. I see how um, you're, that my people are not benefiting from that system they have them under. So I'm going to change it. <laughs> ah, that's God. See, that's what happens when we make him provider. And, and in our love letter, in our, how we live our lives, because how we live our lives is what love letters is all about. How we live our lives reflects, reflects our relationship with God. And God, if he's your provider, he'll say to you or to or whatever system that's harming you, he'll say, hey, uh, that system is not designed. It's not benefiting their life. I'm going to change things. Come on, somebody. Can a brother get an amen in the comment? Come on, let's go to, to our last point. All right, last point. Uh, 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 again, we're talking about how do we allow our lives to reflect God is our provider. Number three is the last one. We must obey God, who is our provider, with the result. That's the money of our system. So your work is your system. And we honor and acknowledge him when we when we when we are when we are paid 
by the system we're working and we bring it back to God and acknowledge him first. <laughs> Come on. Come on, man. Listen, when we obey God with our system of work, you know what it becomes? It becomes worship. So when we bring it back to God, so when we get paid, every time we get paid, I was a teacher, I got paid once a month. I brought my check back to God. I said, God, you are my provider. In other words, you assign me to this work. You're over this system. You are. And I, here's what I made. What do you want? It's worship. Come on, man. You hear that? So listen, so we do it when we when we work, we do it as unto the Lord. It's for his honor and his glory. Yes. So he sees how he sees and he helps us. Listen, he helps us to to be able to operate beyond the tediousness of our, our job. That's just the hand of God. But we're able to 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 see above and work beyond the uncomfortable uncomfortableness of work. That's just God's saying, hey, listen, I'm with you in this system. I'm here. Yeah, I was at UPS. I had days, man. We used to work so hard at UPS. I went from like 220 to, to like 180. I did. My left, let's just tell you, I was, I was skinny thing, dude. Skinny bones. Working in UPS, sweating like that. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, God was so with me. He was so with me that my days turned to worship. I would spend days, I'm mean, on, that, on that truck, eight hours. I'm worshiping, praying, praying, singing. Got my music on. I'm just worshiping God. It turned into worship. Right. And so we have to if we want our lives to reflect God as our provider, we got to obey him with the results that the system he has assigned us to. Now, uh, we have to do what he says, do with it. Right. So what do we must do? We must give because God, because it's God's way of approving and blessing your system. So you want your system. Bless my job. Bless, don't, don't just pray. Bless me. No, you play God. Bless the system that you've assigned my life to. So you always pray for your job. You pray for your boss. You pray for your company. Why? Your life is assigned to that. And you want that system to be blessed so it'll, so you can be blessed. Y'all hear? Right? So, and then once I'm blessed, I must do what God, he says, hey, honor me or acknowledge me in it. Acknowledge me in that. Right? We must give because it's God's way, listen, of approving and blessing your system. All right? Now, here's what I want you to think about. Because think about this. Will God declare your system of work good? He won't if you're not doing what he says do with the results. He says, give, be generous. So generous keeps, generous keeps stinginess and pride and sin out of our, our out of our lives so that we're not focusing on our work as our, our provider. No, God's our provider. So when I give, it take it takes away the range that work will say, hey, do this. I want to, you know, work this, work on Sunday, all that stuff. No, no, no. God's my provider. God, what you want me to do? I'm gonna give and I ain't working on Sundays. <laughs> See, y'all, okay, that's another subject for another day. I got to help your faith. No, but listen, it would be a travesty if we work all our life and God doesn't say, uh, 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 good job. Uh, welcome to to welcome to heaven, you good and faithful servant. I see your work. I see the system I assigned you to, and you got fruit. Come on in. It would be a travesty. He said, well, okay, you did all that. I assigned you to it. But did, you, did you give? Or did you close your hand to me? No, see, listen, let me say this to you, and I'm going to stop. I was going to read this last scripture, but you know what? I'm not going to read because I ran out of time. But listen, listen. Don't close your hand to God. He, he assigned you to the system your life is assigned to. If he's leading and guiding you, yeah, he has. And he wants you to benefit from it, but you got to do it the way he says do it, or you won't benefit. You will be like Adam where you will be in charge of your work. You don't want that. You want God to be in charge of your, and so you're, when you are, when you say God is my provider, you're saying, God, you're the one in charge of my life and the, and this work system that you assigned me to that's designed to bless my life. You're the one in charge of it. So I'll never close my hand to you. I'll open my hand. I'm, let, me, let me tell you the story and, and I'm done. This is how when I used to work out in the fields. My parents taught me about tithing and giving. They did. And we used to give. I used to give as a kid. I used to give one much, but I used to give. And I'm going to tell you, listen, I always had jobs. People will come looking for us. They come to our house first <laughs> because I was a good worker. I mean, I mean, one summer I worked with this one farmer. He was like a soybean farmer. And we, and we and that you ride tractors, right? You ain't out in the field on your feet and doing all that. And and he came looking. He said, I want, I want that one. I want him. I want Darren. Because why? Wow, he's a good worker, man. I like him. He's a hard worker, all that, right? But you know what it was? I, I, my life was assigned to that system and I honored God in it. And he blessed me. And I'm going to tell you, everywhere he is assigned me, when I honored him as provider, he always blessed the system. The last job I had, he blessed that system. Why? I honored him. 
And that's how God said, hey, give, give your tithe and your offerings. Give it, why? I'll, I'll bless the system. Listen, when you don't do this, he's not obligated to bless that system. It'll be, you'll be like, oh God, why is it so hard? Why is it, why? Because you, God is not the provider of it. You are, we don't want that. So we're gonna obey God and see the blessings. Listen, I gotta go, I'm out of time. Thank you all for being, for, for being part of the service this morning. We're just ending our sermon series called Love Letters. I can't wait, it's gonna be good for the next one. <sighs> Listen, again, thank you for being on. Let's pray, Father in heaven, thank you for this wonderful sermon today. Thank you for this lesson. We put you provider over our lives. You provided salvation, which is the, the gift that we needed the most. We're grateful for it. We thank you in Jesus name. Listen, if you're here today and you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm here to tell you, man, you're missing out on the best blessing of your life. Jesus comes and he starts things over and he sits up as Lord of your life. That means he, he'll provide everything you need if you just ask him and trust him to do so. If that's you, listen, just pray this prayer with me. Say, Look, Father, I come to you in Jesus name. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Teach me your ways. I'll live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, our honesty and sincerity, he is now the Lord of your life. And I promise you, he'll teach you how to live for him. He will. Well, not, it won't, everything won't be easy, but he'll teach you how to live for him. If you're looking for a church, we're a good church. Just type new in the comments. We'll send some information what it means to be a partner with Crossroads Church. Listen, we're going to be in person real soon. We still believe in God. We're confessing it every day of the week. And I want you to join with us. And uh, before you know it, we'll be doing this live. You'll be hearing people out, out there in the audience as I'm preaching. Hey, I love you. This is Pastor Darren. I'll see you online somewhere this week. Peace out.